Hello, hello everybody, this is Kiru Show here. Now then, whenever we last left off, Deku, he had just kicked the shit out of Todoroki. Breaking a few of his ribs while Bakugo broke his leg. Now then, let us continue. Afterwards, Deku, he would have walked over to see if Todoroki was okay, and try and help him up. Todoroki just trying to shake Deku off as he would try to stand up, saying that he doesn't need his help. To which Deku would just tell him that he's pretty sure you just broke three ribs. Or cracked him. To which BT would just say, most likely, broken. Now, this is where Deku, he would go to check on Bakugo as Bakugo was actually held out of the building by Recovery Girl. Now, with that being said, Deku, he would just walk over asking Bakugo exactly how did that happen. To which he would just try to explain that he doesn't have control over his quirk. Deku finding this a bit odd. Now, let us cut over to the USJ a few weeks later. <sighs> this is going to be where Deku and May they are getting things ready. It has got it was a bit of a legal trouble, but after getting some of their equipment moved over to UA and taken over to the USJ for the events, people are actually talking. Some of their equipment was moved, some of it was not. It's basically, well, a crate of what they need, and or can swap out. If their gear gets injured or, well, destroyed. Basically a workbench to use. Now then. Ooh. They were at least able to get these brought in. The Titans, however, they were legal trouble. With Deku not able to get his in, and May being told that hers isn't even a Titan. So it may not be permitted. Now then. Deku, he's actually messing around on his computer while they're on the bus. People actually asking him exactly why he's been doing that. To which he's just trying to say, he's trying to find a way around what Mr. Nezu did. Them being a bit confused. Deku explained that he can't use Ion here. It's annoying. To which they would just say that it at least works. Besides, I don't, I'm not really sure you could use those things. Well, not really. Besides, I made Ion when I was seven. To which people would kind of be in shock. Deku would just say that it's not really a big surprise. His quirk allows him to scan things and somewhat make a blueprint. The blueprint print was a bit tricky though. Plus, he can somewhat communicate with technology. Now, people, they're actually asking me about her quirk, to which he would just say that it's called Zoom. Finding that a bit odd, asking for more information. She would just say that her quirk doesn't really do anything special, it just allows her to see farther. So she kind of got into engineering, and well, here we are today. Them being a bit shocked, she doesn't have an enhancement quirk, so that means she's just physically stronger and smarter than a lot of people. Now, at the USJ. People were talking, and this is whenever Deku, he would somewhat notice a bit of interference on his, well, quirk. Along with... Uh, 
He can't sense any nearby tech. It doesn't seem to be working properly. And things are just feeling a bit uncomfortable. To which he would somewhat do one thing, bring up the computer on his wrist, checking to see exactly what's going on. Finding that this place, most of the tech is shut down or disrupted. He would just think that that's purposeful because of his quirk, so it's harder for him to use it. Now, as that happens, Deku, he would walk into the building, and he, no he notices that his computer is glitching quite a bit. As the doors would close, Thirteen would begin giving the presentation about how quirks can be deadly, dangerous, it's depending on how you use them. While Deku, he is messing around with the computer. He would have asked BT using the helmet to patch him through to someone in the tech lab. Because he's not seen anything like this before. As soon as he gets patched in, he is patched into the pilot that he worked with. As he would just ask Midori exactly what is he doing. Daku would just say that he's having a bit of a problem with his tech. As the conversation is very static -y. All the guy heard was problem with tech. Malfunction. Basically, Deku's trying to say that his tech is malfunctioning, and the guy can only hear so few of these words. Along with he's actually seeing exactly what Deku's seeing. However, it's a bit different, since he does see the portal open up, and immediately the transmission cuts out. As he's trying to get a pin on Deku's location now. Warning everyone in the tech lab, and telling them to call UA. As this would happen. Now, as that's happening, Deku, he would try rushing in to help Aizawa, as Mei and Bakugo do the same. Todoroki, being Todoroki, he would try blasting Ice forward so that he can at least help, it, help people, and try and catch some of the villains. Now then, mm, excuse me. That is whenever Kirigiro would watch these four dismantle and take down a lot of villains, as they are all teleported away. Now then, <sighs> Bakugo is taking Deku's place over in the water zone, while Deku, while Deku is taking the place of Kaminari over in the danger zone. <sighs> Love that song. Anyways. While this is happening, Deku is trying to figure this all out. Because he would have met up with Momo and Jiro, and they are talking. They would just ask exactly what's going on, as Deku would just say that this is a bit difficult, but he's trying to patch through to the pilot he works with, or well, the pilot he knows. He had somewhat sent a transmission through, but, well, it was not good. So I don't think he heard me. Although he was able to see my feed. Your feed? This, as he would just point up, to his helmet. Saying that this is a retractable thing, or, well, communications. I didn't have it up very well, but... It's also a bit, as Deku would just take off the helmet, looking at it. Seeing if it's okay, or if it was just, well, hurt, or bent. Since, after repairing the helmet, a little bit of things have been messed up. Bakugo's kick, it destroyed one-tenth of the inside components. And getting it back up and working has been somewhat... Well, a landslide of disasters. Now, Deku, he would just turn around to see that they are surrounded by villains. As he asked Momo exactly what is her quirk, to which she would just say creation. And then he would ask Jiro exactly what her quirk is, to where she would just say that she can, well, throw sound waves at her opponents. 
Deku would just say that that's good. Now, now, let's get to work. As Deku would just turn around, watching as the villains start pouring in. Deku would just bring his hands up as he cracks his knuckles, asking BT if he's still there. BT would say that he is, but connection is very bad, as Deku would begin using his quirk. The connection does seem a bit better, but, well, it's not going to last. So he begins to do one thing. Charging straight in and immediately just throwing Now, Deku would be doing one thing as whenever he rushes in, he starts just grabbing villains, tossing them around and throwing them into each other. As anytime some go to throw punches, Deku just counters them and immediately just starts bashing in them as much as possible. Deku doesn't know any fighting styles. He's just been working on trying to do exactly what a pilot does. But, well, that's just it. He's all strength and no... What's the best way to put it? Brute, fo bleh, brute force can overcome all odds. That's literally Deku at this point. Deku's just bashing around and tossing these villains aside like they're nothing. Momo and Jiro being a bit more inclined to use their quirks. As Deku, he would just watch them make bats, while Jiro tries to use her Soundwave boots. Watching as these things look very ineffective. Hmm. I might talk to everyone about making them some new gear then. This... That's bad. Now, Deku, he would have immediately turned back and began to beat the shit out of the villain he was already holding. Now, for the ones that have hardening quirks, he would use his jump boost and actually just come in, smashing them in the face with a leg and kicking them around. As it would finally get to the electric villain. The electric villain would just say that this is where the line, well, this is the end of the line. So, you don't want to kill anyone, do you? I'll tell you what, I don't use my quirk to electrocute all of you and you just stay put. To where Deku would just bring his hands up. Saying that that sounds good, but you're forgetting one thing. As Deku would just ask BT to scan the sky, try and pinpoint a best course of action. For any known way electric electricity can be used. To where BT would just say that he needs a conductor to use his quirk. And or possibly does not. So best course of action would be as PD would BT would present it to him. Deku would just start walking backwards as he says that that's all fine. As he gets back up back up to Momo. He would just bring his hands down as he brings them behind him. As he just looks towards Momo, telling her that she needs to create something for him. It might not look pretty, but, well, that's going to need to work for it right now. To which she would just ask exactly what. To where Deku would just say a throwing knife. As he begins to pull out his pulse blade. He has it in one hand while he has the throwing knife in the other. He immediately gets into action. As soon as the guy starts walking over, Deku would just rush in. The guy would begin to use his cork, but Deku would just toss the pulse knife straight at him while he tosses the other knife straight up into the air. The guy would throw, go to throw... Well, he would just bring his hand out to send a blast straight at Deku. The knife... Well, the pulse knife getting hit with the force and redirecting it upwards to the knife. As, ugh. now, as soon as the knife gets hit, the villain is confused, as Momo actually created this knife out of copper, allowing Deku to properly get close enough, as he sends an uppercut straight to this guy's face and begins to beat the ever-loving shit out of him, breaking a few ribs, breaking a few teeth, and picking him up and slamming him over his knee. Knocking him out. To where, 
they would just ask Deku exactly why did he have to brutalize all of them. To where he would just say that, that's not important right now. Besides, I'm holding back. As Deku is actually panting very heavily. They would notice this as this is the first time they actually have seen Deku. Without him getting exhausted, well, him getting exhausted. Now, he would just begin by pulling up the antenna and trying to make another call, asking BT if their connection is good now. As soon as that happens, Deku starts talking with the old man. The old man saying that he has stuff scrambled and he has their ions, or he has their armors set up. So, are you with May? To where Deku would say no. Besides, here. As he would just pull something out of his pocket and tap on it. And throw it to the ground, telling everyone they need to back up. They would be, be a bit confused as the old man would just say a f- simple phrase. Stand by for Titanfall. To where he somewhat smirks. Now, Deku would just watch as there is a loud sound. And proceed... It is followed by a loud force, as everyone looks up to see a couple robots falling into the building and touching down. You have Ion, Ion, or North Star. You also have May's 40k armor, which People are just staring at for a second, and you also have her Hulkbuster, along with one little thing, the Monarch. Momo and Jiro are just staring at these, as Jakku isn't lying. They, they've actually built all this crap? Well, I, I mean, he... Uh, as Momo just brings her hands up to her head, trying to process exactly what this is. This guy, his quirk, technopath. That means he built all this from scratch. As they would walk over. Deku would just say that BT is going to have to link up with Monarch. As he would do so. Deku jumping up into the cockpit. As he turns to everyone else. He would turn to them saying that if they would like to, they can hop in the other ones. It can help you guys protect each other and, well, go around helping everyone in the USJ. Now, Northstar, he can fly, so he's good. Ion, however, he cannot, so he's got a bit more defensive capabilities. Do not enable lethal force. Unless you believe you are in danger. To where they would just somewhat be in shock. Lethal force? He made this thing to be non-lethal, but it can be. It can already crush somebody into a fine red paste. Now then. After that happens, Deku, he would just tell them that if they do that, they can help save people. So let's get moving. As Deku would just somewhat try linking up with Mei. As his helmet, she would pop up on screen. Deku would just ask her exactly where is she right now. To where she would say she's heading for the Titanfall. Huh. Never thought I'd say those words out loud. Well good, but I can take control manually. And come to you. Exactly where are you? As she would just say that she's nearby a riverbed. To where Deku would hear a sound. Gary Gary, summon the Nomu. As you would see Bakugo. He's just standing there with a broken arm. As he tried throwing a punch at Shigaraki. He didn't think it through as he's just trying to hold up his arm, trying to throw explosions at him. Now, after that happens, Deku, he would just turn, telling... BT to guide them on how to use it. I'll be fine for right now. As he would link up with his Titan. Now, after that happens, this is where Deku, he would just use his quirk to take control of 
Maze, 40k armor, and the Hulkbuster. As he begins to make his way straight for May. As that happens, he would just watch as he comes flying in. Immediately rushing forwards, grabbing Shigaraki as he was rushing at May, and throwing him in the opposite direction. As he would just jump out asking May if she's good. To where he would see that a lot of her armor and the plating right there, it is heavily damaged. He would just see as she just grabs it, taking it off, as she begins to do so for the infected tech. Looking down at her wrist, she tries to put in a command to repair. As the area gets slowly covered in nanites. As she would just say that that's pretty good. You gotta watch out for that guy. His cork is decay. Okay, noted. Well, we have a bigger problem. Bakugo is injured and well. This is not going to end well. I only got 10 minutes of power left in this suit. Okay, well, it's a good thing I brought you a backup. As May would smile seeing her baby, the Hulkbuster. Now, Deku, he would just hop back in the Monarch as May jumps into the Hulkbuster. These two immediately just beginning to rush at the Nomu. As this happens, this is whenever an unexpected thing, well, an unexpected turn would happen. There is another sound. Another Titan fall. As everyone would turn to see, a, well, what can be best described as more Titans. Except they have guns. And they are using lethal force. Now, as that happens, Deku would just watch in shock as May, she would just stare at him, asking if those are friends of his. Nope. This is new. As the villains will begin making their way over to the other villains. Now, this is whenever they would all rush in. Deku would just tell, well, he would just try linking up with his other titans, saying that he's going to need North Star and he's going to need an Ion. So, if you guys want to help us, you kind of need to either stay in the suit or hop out. This is about to get dangerous. To where Jiro and Mei would hop out after helping Kirishima's group. Now, as that happens, North Star would begin to fly over. As so does Ion. He's running as fast as possible. And he's using a booster to move faster. Now then... With that, this is where these two would immediately come in as they tackle and actually try taking down the other titans. Them immediately beginning to smash and throw punches. As Ion's using his vortex shield to try and keep himself safe. <sighs> While you have North Star trying to electrocute and take down the other titans without hurting them. He's using his tether trap to actually do that, but it's not working. Now, the Titans would just pop up on screen as they're trying to talk with Deku. Deku, he, however, is trying to fight with the Nomu, and so is Mei, as these two are somewhat holding it off. Now, while that's happening, this is whenever Deku would immediately get shot in the back, as he feels... Something electrocute his titan. As a BT would just override Deku. Saying, pilots in danger. Protocol 3, protect the pilots. As lethal force is engaged. Now, as soon as that happens, the, the titan would immediately just spin around as it begins to just charge as many missiles as possible, sending it straight at their direction as North Star and Ion would have gotten this communication too. North Star immediately just throwing out anything he can and just going for plasma missiles, as people would watch this happen. The AI has gone a bit out of protocol. Now then. Well, May, she decides that if she need, they need to use lethal force, she can switch over. 
as a Hulkbuster would just make a sound. May immediately just holding up her hands and blasting as many missiles at the Noma as possible. While she runs in, tackling it and somewhat putting it in a full Nelson. As Deku begins to just punch in and just keep smashing away at the Nomu. Mei doing the same as the Nomu. He would just bring his hands backwards, actually grabbing onto Mei's piece, where the back of her head is. He grabs into that and he immediately throws Mei over his shoulders and over his head, smashing her down. As soon as that happens, this is whenever Mei's power source is compromised, as she is told to eject. As soon as that's, as soon as that protocol is dictated, this is where Mei, she immediately just jumps out of her armor, as she directs it to, well, hug the Nomu, as you can say. Autopilot would dictate that they need to use this attempt to subdue the enemy. The Hulkbuster would immediately just come charging up at the Nomu, grabbing at its legs. As it throws it down and begins to just climb on top of it, somewhat just holding on to it. As it detonates. With that happening, this is where Deku, he would just see that Mei, she's actually up in the air. So she's going to need a bit of a helping hand. Before anything can happen, this is whenever BT, he would just say one word. Compromised. Now, Deku would just try turning around as he sees that Ion, he's missing pieces. But so is the enemy pilot. He has taken down and nearly destroyed Ion. North Star is still trying to attack and actually take down the enemy. He took down one of the enemy pilots already, but in the process taking heavy damage. As North Star doesn't have any legs anymore, he's just hovering and trying to attack with his hands. Deku would just run over as he punches into and actually begins to rip apart the mech. As he does so, he would have ripped open the hole, seeing that it's empty. So this was remote controlled. Good. <sighs> okay, good. BT. Yes, pilot. You need to learn to, as before Deku can even finish, there is a loud brunt, well, force, as the mech is sent flying. Deku and the monarch would just turn around as he sees that the Nomu is still alive, regenerating quite a bit of its skin and flesh. Now, Deku is in shock as he just says that that thing's not human. It's not human, this is good. As he would just tell Ion, or tell the monarch to use the plasma blades as he would begin. He would just hold out his arms as two beams of light shoot out of his wrist. While that happens, this is where Deku he would just say that this will work perfectly. Charging straight in. As soon as the Nomu makes physical contact, grabbing onto Deku's hands, this is where Deku would do one thing. He would just jump out of the monarch as he stares the Nomu directly in the face, trying to stab into its neck and into its face with his knife, trying to take it down, and throwing it forward. As soon as that happens, the Nomu, it would have just cocked its head backwards and trying to... Now, Deku, he would have actually just backed away as he would fall back into the seat. The knife still stuck into the Nomu's head, or throat, you can say. It is... Just someone flailing around. As Deku would look up, Mei, she is trying to fight and actually hold off Shigaraki, but she keeps having to boost away and move around. As he would just immediately instruct BT to use the Monarch and throw the Nomu. BT would understand as he does try twisting and actually messing with the Nomu more. He would have used one of the blades turning his hands to cut the Nomu's arm, as he severs it. Using this chance, he would grab the, the Nomu's leg and immediately lift him up, throwing him straight at Shigaraki, as Deku tells Mei to move. Mei would have turned around seeing this as she immediately just jumps upwards. As that happens, she gets a couple feet up into the air. 
as she is considered to be a sitting duck. Now, this is where the Nomu, it would get back up, charging straight over at Deku. As Deku gets ready, before he can even begin, one of his legs falls. And he is off balance. Wondering what that was, he would look down to see there's a portal. As Kiragiri would immediately close it, cutting off the monarch's leg. Deku, being a little bit annoyed, would just say that BT needs to help. What can BT do right now? As Mei is trying to call her armor. It is busy holding off more of the villains and protecting students. She thinks that that's at least good, then... Shit. I'm just sitting duck. Now, as that happens, Deku... He would just watch the Nomu fly straight for him. As Mei would begin doing one thing. She would rush straight for the Nomu, actually coming in... Climbing onto its back. Now, as soon as that happens, this is one of her Deku... He would just see Mei trying to reach for the knife, as the Nomu would be trying to grab at her. Deku just trying to hold onto the Nomu's hands and keep it away, as the Nomu keeps fighting. It would have done one thing, as it would bring its leg upwards, kicking Deku in the chest as it rips out the monarch's right arm. As the entire pilot base shakes, he asked exactly how good are their chances of winning. To which, BT would say, less than 10%. However, he can initiate self-destruction and raise that to about 50 to 60. Since another, well, explosion may take out the Nomu, or at least hold it off. The heroes will be here in less than, as he would just say, 182 seconds. So, uh, so I need to keep this thing busy for at least three minutes. Got it. As Deku would just tell Mei to jump away. She would get airborne as whenever she does so, she looks down at her wrist. Ten seconds. Deku would immediately open up the pilot bay as he would grab the knife from the Nomu, trying to slash it across its eyes. Doing so, this is whenever the monarch would immediately just force its hand into the Nomu, ripping apart its arm with a plasma blade. Now, he would have began by grabbing it and smashing it to the ground as he just uses what's left of the other arm, and smashes down with an elbow, holding it down, as it initiates self-destructs. Deku would think that that's good, as he would look over at Mei. They're in the explosion distance. There's no time, as Deku runs straight for her. Now, this is whenever her timer would hit zero, as Deku sees the nanites fall to the ground. Mei would immediately turn to look at Deku as she's looking at the explosion. Before it can go off, Deku would actually have tackled Mei to the ground and fold his arms out over her to protect her from the blast. Now, as soon as that happens, the bleh, smoke would clear and Mei, she's just looking up at Deku. However, he's bleeding heavily. Now, all Might would come bursting through the door as he would hear the explosion. He would just think that that's crazy, there's pilots here. As he would just see Deku and Mei somewhat on the ground. Now, before anything, anything can happen, All Might would rush in, immediately running over to them. This is whenever Deku would somewhat just stand up as they see him wincing in pain. Mei would just say, th thank you, as Deku would just try saying something. Before he can say anything, he would just fall over onto the ground. As though synthetic muscle is destroyed all over his back. She's in shock looking at this as she would immediately just try picking up Deku. The muscles, they are somewhat light, but Deku is still a little heavy. As soon as she does that, she would immediately run over to Bakugo, asking for a hand, as Bakugo would have brought up his arm, grabbing Deku and helping her rush him away. All Might, he would begin fighting the Nomu, as it is still regenerating, giving him somewhat of an edge. 
he would have been able to do exactly what Deku did by trying to rip away its arms and, well, taking advantage of hitting areas that are not covered in shock absorption, damaging them more and making them have to regenerate more, as eventually he would send the Nemo flying. Now, after that happens, Karaguri is a bit confused because that thing was made to kill All Might and that dumbass pilot was able to hold it off, but not for very long. As he's thinking that, that kid's probably dead. Well, no loss then. At least he got away with something. Now, that is going to be where I leave things off of, guys. I do hope you enjoyed the video, and have an amazing day. I will catch you guys in the next part.